What's up guys, Andre here, and today I'd like to show you how you can use render props in React. Render props are a powerful pattern that allow for component reusability across your entire application. I actually just did a video on the same thing in Vue.js where this pattern is referred to as scope slots. I figured I'd do the same thing here in React. So here's the example we'll be working with. It's a list of video games that gets pulled from a video game API. We'll incrementally make changes to it and make the component more reusable using render props. So a quick overview of the code. We have our app.js where there's just a container and then it calls our game list component where it pulls from this API in the componented mount hook and then it sets it to state and then it just renders it out in a list like you see here. So if you just have this layout, then this component is fine and you can reuse it across your entire application. However, if it needs to render differently, we can make use of several approaches. So the first example we'll look at is if we want to have different a different number of columns for this component. So the only thing that needs to change is this number right here. So say we want four, let's change it to four. And now we have four columns. So all we would have to do to make the component dynamic is to pass in a prop and use that prop as the number here. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to change this to a template string. And then I'm going to accept the prop here. We'll call it columns. So this dot props dot columns. And I'm not going to use prop types here, although you should, because I am being a lazy developer. And then let's just wrap this in curlies. And one more over here. Okay. And let's pass in that a prop from here. So a prop called columns and let's say three. Okay. See if this works. Okay. So that works and we can have multiple components with a different amount of columns as long as we have CSS defined for that. So this one can be six if you want. And there's six down there. But what if we want a completely different layout that has different markup? So one approach would be to pass in a prop from the parent and then conditionally render the appropriate markup in the child based on the prop passed in. So let's quickly do that. So I'm going to bring this back and remove the columns here. And let's bring this back as well. Okay, so Let's check for a prop called layout, which we'll pass in in a second. So this dot props dot layout, if it's equal to say grid, and you can make that default using prop types, but again, I'm being lazy and I'm not using prop types here. We'll render this out. Sorry, that should be end. And for the other layout, I'm just going to paste it in to save some time. But the other layout we'll call vertical. And I'm just going to do that. And take this out. And let's change this to vertical here. And this is the markup for that format. So let's change our parent component. And let's add in a prop here. So let's say layout equals grid for the first one, and then vertical for the second one. And let's see if this works. Okay, so there's the default grid layout. And there's the vertical layout. Cool. However, if we look at our code in the game list, you can see that this can quickly get really messy if we add another layout. So it seems to me 
that instead of passing in a prop and then rendering out certain markup based on that prop, we want to pass in the HTML that we want to render from the parent into the child. So essentially, we want to let the parent be responsible for the HTML that renders out in this instance of the component. So this is where render props come in. So let's go ahead and make use of that. So to start off, let me just show you how you can render out children. So if I just do this dot props dot children here, save that and then in the parent, if we add a closing tag here, so I'm going to do this and then do game list here or clo a closing game list tag. And let me just get rid of this one. Then anything you pass into here, even markup gets passed in as children. So hello there. So this should render out in the child because we have this, uh, this dot props dot children. So let's see if that works. Okay, so that works. Cool. Sorry, the API is really slow. I'll try to edit, edit out the slowness, but it's being really slow. Okay, so let's use that knowledge to pass in the HTML that we want to render from the parent into the child. So let me just grab this. And then I'm going to comment out everything in here in the return. So up to here. And all I'm going to do in here is return this dot props dot children. And then we're going to pass through what we want to pass to the parents. So in this case, we want to pass games. And then that's going to be this dot state dot games. Okay. So now in here, we can replace this with the markup for the grid layout. Let me get rid of this. Let's paste that in. Let me just reinvent this. Okay. And this won't work yet, but let's see what error we get. So yeah, games is null. So we need to accept the games that we're passing in from the child here into this parent component. So how do we do that? So instead of just passing in the markup, we have to pass in a function here. And that function will accept the games as a prop. So let's do that. So I'm just going to do this and then close it down here. And yeah, let's pass in a function here. So it's going to be an arrow function. And then bracket like this. And let's close the bracket here. And in here is where we want to accept the game. So we can destructure that out. So games. And now we can reference that. So we don't need this dot state that games, we just need the games coming in. And if I did that correctly, that should work. And there are the games, but now we're using a render prop and the parent is now responsible for passing in the HTML we want to render. So let's go ahead and do the same thing for that other layout. So I'm just going to grab this H1. Actually, it ends here, right? And let's put another one here called vertical layout. And I'm going to grab this again. And I'm going to paste that game list in. But we're going to replace this markup with the vertical layout markup, which is in here. So it's just this. Paste that in. And let's change this to just use the variable coming in. And now that should work. 
Okay, so there's the default grid layout. But if we want another layout, we can easily just change the markup for that. And then here's our vertical layout. Cool. Okay, let's think about how we can make this component a bit more flexible. Say we wanted to display another set of results from another endpoint. So right now the endpoint is hard coded into the game list component right here. So one approach would be to accept a prop in the parent and then can and then check that prop and then we can change this endpoint based on the prop coming in. Or the more flexible approach would be to just pass this endpoint to the parent or don't pass it to the parent, but let the parent be responsible for passing in the endpoint. That way we can use any endpoint that we want. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to cut this out. I'm just going to say this dot props dot endpoint. And then from the parent, I'm just going to pass it in as a prop. So we have to do that for both components. So this one, let's say endpoint equals this and for the other one as well. Endpoint equals that. And this should still work. And it does, cool. But now we can use any endpoint we want. So I'm going to make another section here. So I'm just going to grab this again and just make another section here for say search results for it's going to be search results for Super Mario. And the endpoint is going to be different, but that doesn't matter because we can just pass it in from here. So I'm going to paste in a new endpoint and that should work fine. If you scroll down, sorry, it's slow. So there is the other section we have with another endpoint. So our component is a bit more flexible. But if we look at that component, it's called game list, but there isn't really anything here about games anymore. The only thing it's doing is getting data from an endpoint that's passed in from the parent, setting that variable, and then letting the parent render it out passing that variable up. So it's only responsible for getting JSON. So it would make sense to rename this to just a generic get JSON component. So get JSON. Yes. And let's change a few things here. Let's call it get JSON. And let's make this games variable more generic as well. We can just name it response or something like that. So response. Okay, so this component is now just a generic get JSON component, but let's make the changes here as well. So we need to change this to get JSON. Um, we need to change these game lists to get JSON. So let's go get JSON. And then for these games, it's not called games anymore, but we can destructure out the response and then change the name to game. So let's do that for all of them. Um, I should just use multiple cursors, but whatever. Let's do that. And this should still work. Okay, so let's see if this works. Cannot read property map of undefined. So what is undefined here? Sorry, I forgot to change this to response. All right, let's try it again. Okay, looks good. So one more quick cleanup here. If we look at our code, we have some duplication in our main app component here. So this format the grid layout and this one is the same, but we have duplication here. So how do we go about cleaning that up? 
So to clean that up, all we would have to do is wrap this up, this code that's duplicating, because right now it's duplicating in those two components into its own component. So let's cut this out. Actually, let me just comment it out. Let me copy it, comment it out. And then let's add a new component here called grid layout, which we'll add in a second. And we're going to pass it in the games that we're getting from the child. So games equals games. And we can do that. So let's go ahead and make a new component here. Let's call it grid layout or whatever you want. And this is going to be a stateless component. So I think I have a snippet. So stateless component. Again, you should use prop types, but I'm being lazy, so I'm not going to. So this is going to accept props. And I'm just going to paste in that markup. Let me just reinvent this. And instead of games, we're going to use the props. And if I did this correctly, that should work. Save this as well. Actually, I have to import this. So import grid layout from grid layout. Okay, save. Check it out. Okay, so that worked. So we can do the same thing for this. And now we won't have repeating code. So I'm just gonna do this, grab this, I mean, we can remove this now. And then I'm gonna do the same thing here. Since it's just a grid layout. And that should work as well. Okay, cool. Now our code is clean and reusable. And for any layout, we can just extract that to its own component. But if we have something different, we can totally just pass in the markup using render props. So to show you how flexible it is, I'm not going to do it, but I'll just talk my way through it. Say this was just not a video game site, but a media site, a general media site and we wanted another section that didn't display video games, but displayed movies. So all we would have to do is use this get JSON component, pass in a different endpoint, and then just give it the HTML we want it to render. We can use this if you want or pass in whatever we like. The only difference would be we'd have, just have to change this prop name just to something more generic. Uh, so yeah, we just change this to like collection and yeah, it's pretty flexible. So there you have it guys. We've taken a look at render props in react to make our components and our code robust, flexible, and very reusable. Please like comment and subscribe if you haven't already done so. Thanks for watching guys. See you in the next one. Okay. Thanks. Bye.